Hello everybody, my name is Dragagan, and this is Factorio Space Exploration. So, Space Exploration is a mod created by Arendelle, and really it's a collection of mods. There are uh, several mods that go into this mod pack. Um, I have gone ahead and also added in a couple of other mods that I uh, like to use when I uh, play, uh, just for convenience purposes, quality of life, that type of thing. If we go to our mod list, um, you can see that uh, if we go ahead and scroll on down to the actual space exploration, you can see everything that is required and optional. I've gone ahead and included them all. And I'll do a walkthrough as well as the optional ones that I've installed. So I have the um, AAI containers and warehouses, which is optional. Um, AAI industry, AAI signal transmission, um, and then the alien biomes. Uh, I have the uh, high-res terrain on there because uh, I can run with the uh, high-res terrain on this computer. Um, I have Bottleneck, uh, which is just an add-on that shows a little icon underneath uh, facilities to denote whether they are paused or if they are running slowly or if they are running at uh, full speed, just so that I can keep track of whether things are running properly or not. Uh, bullet Trails is one of the optional ones, just so you can see where you or the uh, vehicles and stuff from AAI are shooting. Then we have the uh, Combat Mechanics Overhaul, which is also optional. Um, that one is, um, you know, as you can see here, overhaul certain mechanics and collision settings. Uh, the big one for that is that your walls will block uh, the spitter uh, shots. So you don't have to worry as much about spitters uh, shooting over walls and destroying your uh, turrets and stuff like that. Uh, so that's kind of nice. It also, oddly enough, is kind of funny. Uh, I think it I think it has an effect here on the label for Factorio because I've noticed that the guy, when he runs around, gets stuck on it. And when the tanks drive through, it wipes out the uh, uh, the uh, this Factorio sign as they collide over it and it just, you know, passes right over it. Next, we have the equipment gantry. This is another optional one uh, that allows you to stick equipment into certain vehicles uh, ahead of time before they go out so that uh, you don't have to do that manually. Uh, even distribution is one that I've added just because I like to be able to hold control and drag across my uh, early resources in order to drop off uh, uh, coal and you know copper and iron and things like that. Uh, the Factorio Library, typical. Uh, FNEI I have installed because I do like uh, the FNEI layout. It works along the same lines as uh, uh, NEI in Minecraft, so it, I get along well with it. The Grappling Gun is another optional item. It uh, is like a weapon, and you shoot it, and it hits a spot, and it yanks you towards that spot for really quick maneuvering or you know, being able to hop over water and things like that uh, uh, when you don't have like something like a Spider-Tron. I have Helmod installed because I like to uh, plan out some of my base type stuff. I am by no means any kind of expert and doing the math of trying to figure out how many um, assemblers I need of a given level in order to, you know, keep up with a certain output of items. I just use Helmod to do that for me. Uh, Informatron uh, comes with... Uh, space exploration and uh, just allows you to gives you some really helpful information it's keyed to the same hotkey as Helmod, so it's kind of funny i'll open up to go to Helmod and informatron will pop up i just haven't bothered to uh, try and change that uh, next is the jetpack to allow you to fly over but i uh over things but i think that's like blue science or later it's pretty far along the way uh, one of the other things I include is the logistics train network. Uh, that's probably one of the only reasons, uh, or one of the only things I uh, like to include uh, just for anything that I'm going to be doing with trains. Makes things much simpler in that regard. Robot attrition. Apparently uh, this is included so that robots like oil crash and fail when going over long distances and stuff like that. Makes it kind of interesting. Uh, of course, the Space Exploration base mod, so you can see everything that it has. Robot Attrition. Oh, Jetpack is not optional. It is one of the uh, required uh, mods there. Um, the graphics 
uh, mod so that you get all the nice graphics for all of the new buildings and things along those lines. Um, I also have the HR graphics so they look even better. Uh, post process is kind of a, um, yeah, it's a, I, I'd call it a coder hack, uh, but uh, there are stuff that uh, Arendelle needs loaded at the very end after everything else is done. So this is just a nice way of uh, making sure that the final set of stuff is handled there in that mod. And then lastly is squeak through. Uh, not too often in a, in a n normal world do I find myself needing squeak through, but it is handy sometimes to be able to get between a couple of buildings. Uh, I used it primarily in, when I was playing um, C block. Uh, so I have played C block and that's the first place I ever got acquainted with squeak through because it is quite uh, obnoxious trying to run through some builds and getting stuck on things because it's not, you know, your character's a little large. So anyway, uh, that is the uh, list of um, mods there for this pack. Um, I've already started one single player game. I went through and was uh, trying to find a decent, um, a decent seed. Oh, and it looks like it's reset my seed from the last time. I uh, may have to pull up my autosave and pull out my uh, my map uh, string for this then and uh, restart this video once I have that map string imported. Um, the big one, though, is this guy right here. Always making sure the research queue is available. I like to queue up multiple researches and just let it go to town while I am busy planning out other parts of the factory. So I'm going to... Uh, Pause the video real quick. I'm going to go grab that other map exchange string because I found a pretty decent map. It was just a matter of um, I forgot to set the research queue, <laughs> so I had to restart it. So anyway, I will be back in just a bit. All right, I'm back and I have uh, the map seed for what I am doing. I'm going to go ahead and uh, really quick set up that research queue. I really didn't touch anything else. I kind of wanted to give it a playthrough of what they consider average for everything that goes on uh, in this game. Uh, let's go ahead and export that. And I will uh, keep that and put that in the description below for those people who want to uh, play on this world. Um, as you can see, uh, some of the biter nests are a little bit further away. Uh, so we won't have as many early issues of... Uh, running into biters. Uh, the important stuff being this iron patch here, this coal patch here, and this copper patch down here. The stone patch is a little bit further away uh, compared to uh, the, the couple of starting patches that you start with here uh, down below, but I figured this would give a fairly sizable area here to set up an initial, um, an initial factory and stuff. Uh, and then from there, we can begin to branch out and, you know, uh, clear out some biter nests on our way to get some of these larger patches of ore. And I'm probably going to go with uh, something more like a an LTN style base where I'll have a couple of spots um, for uh, trains to come in, deposit in the ore, and then the ore gets, you know, done whatever it needs to be done with and then passed around to the other uh, sent to like a um, uh, a requester station, and then the requester station will take it somewhere else in the factory where it needs to go. But of course, as with always in the early game, we'll end up starting with uh, some kind of main bus that's just running around with the iron and copper plates, uh, and then making the bricks and things like that. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and play. One of the first things you'll notice, though, when we've landed on the planet, uh, of course, is, of course, the crash landing scene. But for those who haven't played space exploration, one of the first things that does end up happening is um, we end up with um, the sun um, having coronal mass ejection. And what that means is that uh, if we scroll out a little ways, the sun has these heat spots that uh, come around and are uh, just, you know, hitting the ground. If it's too close to you on screen, you'll actually start ticking a little bit of damage, presumably because uh, the heat is overwhelming. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and pick up 
Uh, yep, see there, you can see I'm, I'm ticking a little bit because it's getting a little too close to me. Hopefully it goes away soon and doesn't burn up too much of our resources around here. Wow. Almost feels like it's chasing you, doesn't it? <laughs> it's supposed to be random, but uh, there it goes. All right. Looks like it may have even destroyed a couple of the smaller little bits. They're just like things like single plates and whatnot. It's nothing, uh, nothing too worrying there. The important ones are some of these other things here that get you... Well, looks like I'm not getting anything by cleaning them up. Well, that's no good. Uh, let me just double check here. Yeah, I have the stuff that it needs for the uh, early part of the game, though, so that's all right. Let me just get this stuff cleaned up real quick here. And there's the other thing you can see. Uh, occasionally, a meteor will crash somewhere on the planet. So there's that as well. Uh, lots of stuff to uh, look out for and uh, be concerned about. Uh, basically breaking your stuff uh, from the get-go. So uh, there are things to mitigate uh, the various uh, things like the coronal mass ejection, uh, things like the meteors. There's a meteor defense that you can get into. There's this thing called an umbrella, apparently, that you can get into. But the mod itself is uh, pretty crazy. Uh, I was really getting into uh, a little bit of the fun of it. I have not made it anywhere close to launching the first satellite to start looking at having the space-based base and building a ship and all the other things that space exploration has. Um, so far, I've just kind of been puttering around. So you guys will um, experience in real time uh, my joy or frustration with trying to build up all the various uh, things. So now that we've got this pretty much cleaned up, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to our wonderful little area here of coal. And we'll go ahead and plop down that guy, plop down that, and then I'm going to look real quick for yeah, a couple of these bigger rocks that have some coal in them. Because that starter coal we can then use here. And then we'll also slap in some of those things so that as the coal fills up, we'll start getting some um, stone brick. Stone brick being necessary for the creation of more burner mining drills. So there we go. Start with that. Get another burner mining drill going. And we're just going to start with... Um, the small loop that everybody is used to seeing here when it comes to uh, getting started. There we go. Let's go ahead and grab that. We'll put that, and I need one more. There we are. So there's those, and those will get going. In the meantime, I'll go ahead and uh, put this guy down over here. And we will get him filled up again. And then also go ahead and place this, get those in there. And our first research is going to be basic automation. So I leave the thing, the thing for pollution turned on. Uh, this base way over here is uh, pretty far away, so I don't have to worry too much about an early biter attack there. But at least get these things started to fill up. And we'll go ahead and get our first couple of stone. Come on now. There and there. I've got just a little bit of plates left, so I can also get one or two for the uh, um, for uh, iron going here. That's going a little quick. Okay, well, uh, let's go ahead and slap down one. And we'll get
get the other one right there. We don't need to use the wood, but it doesn't hurt to also use the wood. Actually, let's grab some of that and we will create a box of that guy and put those in there. That way we'll get a little bit of um, stone started to build up so that I can build some more furnaces. There we go. And there's basic automation, which just gives us access to the burner assembling machine and the burner inserter. From there, um, I usually like to go for um, the military and stone walls. Uh, it turns out that when you get to the uh, gun turrets, um, wrapping a gun turret in stone walls, again, because of that um, that combat mod overhaul um, turrets sitting inside walls the biters will run up to the walls and try and destroy the walls while the turret has time to uh, take them out uh, so that's definitely a plus there and we'll just continue doing this for a little while here uh, let's see here go ahead and grab that we'll get another one of those going that and go ahead and get those guys filled up there we go and now that we've started getting some of this stuff going we can go ahead and expand on our nice little uh, coal setup over here And let's see here. So we've got two there. Let's go ahead and knock out a couple of these guys who will eventually be in our way. And we'll just keep progressing with our uh, with our stuff. Uh, let's see here. Grab those. That'll get us four more of those. And then, let's see here, we've got two. I'd like to have six, so another four. That was five. And then three for um, copper. And this guy will actually end up there. And then these guys over here. So one of the things, if you guys didn't see right there, um, this game has health med packs because your health takes quite a while to heal itself back up to normal normally. So you end up making health packs uh, in order to uh, heal yourself back up. I'm not going to bother with it right now just because I don't have a biter attack imminent. So I'm not too concerned with it. Um, but uh, yeah, those are there for that. All right, let's go ahead and make all four of those. That'll finish out our iron area. One, two, oops, three, and four. And then we'll go ahead and grab a little bit more coal. Hey, there we go. And get those guys filled up. That'll work. So now we've got a decent amount of iron being produced. Next, after the iron, I'll get a little bit of copper going because we'll need it. So there we go. Three of those guys for copper. And then we can start taking a look at uh, getting this stuff uh, handcrafted out. Come on. <laughs> Can't seem to click right there. All right, and then get all that. All right, 
So let's go ahead and chop down a little bit of trees here. We've got one of those. We'll make a second one. One there, this guy over to gears, get this guy to red circuits, and then I need two burner drills. And there we go. Slap those in, slap those in. And we'll go ahead and just let our research tick up while we get going. All right. So the next thing uh, I need to focus on is, uh, well, really it's just expanding our research, expanding our coal, and... Uh, one of the first techs after these guys is to get our fuel processing, which gets us this processed fuel, which works really nice. It's a, as you can see, a 10% energy value gain. Um, it takes, um, basically it takes, what, 9 to make a 10. So it'll go through a couple pieces of coal uh, in order to make one uh, processed fuel there. And then anything that can burn fuel can burn that. So it makes it work out really nicely. All right. Another one of those. one of those, and then that, and that. Get that guy started, and then get all of that going. Pick up those, pick up those, and there we go set of that, uh, that, and that, and there we go. And basically I will just uh, continue with this until we have stuff up and running. And there we go. Plenty of coal being made now. And our pollution still isn't quite reaching that base, so that's good. And this will pretty much be our life for just a little bit. Um, again, just uh, making what we need, getting our research up and running. Uh, we did get military, so I can make myself a better gun now and some light armor. And I think you guys know the drill just from the early game 
uh, type stuff. There's our stone walls now that we can make. Twelve of them will fully encase one gun turret, so that'll be something to work on here soon. Um, in the meantime, we can go ahead and probably expand this just a little bit, just to increase our output. Um, one of those, two of those, two of those. So there's the gun turret. Next, we'll go ahead and go with fuel processing. And then after fuel processing, hmm, we'll go with logistics and then electricity. And then we'll need sand at some point. So we'll just let that go. Of course, the big important things that here are getting ourselves our first gun turret. And of course, the birds are still here. For those of you who have watched other playthroughs of mine, the birds are still here in the room. They are squawking away, having a happy old time over there. Hopefully they aren't too loud and obnoxious for anybody who's joining for the first time this series. There we go. There we go. And then a chunk of that and a chunk of that. And that'll get us going with our Research. So, if we want to take a look real quick, um, technology-wise, it isn't too much different, I don't think, from vanilla. It's been a while since I played vanilla. As I said, I just came off of playing some uh, C block. Uh, I'm almost up to blue science and C block, um, but. Shortly after you get into red-green science, one of the things you will notice is there's that grappling gun. Um, there are these things like multi-cylinder engines, uh, as opposed to um, the, you know, this small electric motor that things start needing in order to run with electricity. Um, trains key off of those multi-cylinder uh, engines, things along that line. Um, but then as we get down here, you'll start to see stuff like this. There's a pulverizer for making sand. Um, sand, I guess, is another one of those things. It wasn't a, uh, it wasn't a thing in vanilla. Um, yeah, it looks like it's added by AAI industry there. Uh, so there's that. Here is stuff like the meteor point defense, a weapon that has 50% um, accuracy uh, in taking down those meteors, and you have to build specific ammo for it. Um, and then as you get even further up past launching um, the rocket, you'll start to see these other science packs, rocket science pack, uh, astronomic science packs, and there is plenty of fun technology to have a look-see through here. So yeah, uh, this is definitely going to be interesting. Um, this is my, I haven't made it to launching the rocket in this pack when I was playing around. Um, so. Uh, you guys will get to watch me um, flounder and sputter as I try and figure out how um, to build a spaceship and how to get to space. Because you'll notice up along here, there's the, you know, there's your Helmod planner. That's that's nothing real new. The Informatron, though, um, starts telling you about stuff like meteor defense um, and how many meteors there is a chance to have fall. It looks like it's a 50% chance per meteor. For every meteor that's successful, another chance gets rolled. Uh, and so there are your odds of that. Um, they have things called core miners, oops, uh, which uh, the core miners will mine up something different depending on the um, uh, on the planet that you're on. Home worlds have one set, and then they've got other things that have other sets of um, materials, and those materials will be required to progress. So yeah, it will be uh, definitely a fun and interesting 
uh, time here playing with this, but at least we've gotten up to a red science. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, call this video done uh, off camera. I'm going to uh, just continue to get some of this red science research done. Um, I, do need to, uh, I do need to set this up uh, in the direction of those biters. Um, our pollution is almost not quite reaching it. So let's go ahead and build our first defense there. Wrap it all around. And there we go. So now we've got a fully enclosed and we'll go ahead and get this guy ammoed up and then I'll make myself some more ammo uh, to work with that. Uh, let's go ahead and just drop the pistol and we'll put in our uh, submachine gun there. So there we go. Yeah, uh, we're off to a uh, fun first start trying to get all of this stuff uh, set up and running. And uh, yeah, uh, I will see you guys in the next video where we'll have just a little bit of stuff set up. Not a whole lot different uh, from what is going on now. Um, there we go. Start to get some of these fuel pellets produced. Uh, as we start branching our way out into this iron field over here, this coal field over here, and then of course just on the other side of this thing of water is our copper field and we'll try and get an initial area um, picked out for where we plan on setting up our initial bus as we get started towards trains in order to get access to LTN so that we can um, get this base on wheels and rolling. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Till then.